On a governance and leadership level, lies can be advantageous to stop panic or even win a war. The Trojan horse being the prime example, seeming like a good lie and an excellent tactic to the Greeks, but to the inhabitants of Troy, an evil lie and not such a great tactic. When is it okay to lie to the public? Presidents especially need to weigh the costs and benefits of the deception. But there is no doubt that Iraq poses a threat in respect of weapons of mass destruction, and there is no doubt that this... I apologize for the fact that the intelligence we received was, was wrong, but I... The illusory truth effect. First recognized by Hasher and Goldstein in 1977, the illusory truth effect shows that people are more likely to believe in something if the information fits in with their view of the world, or that it appears to be familiar, thus reputation and repetition help in belief. This can be seen in many religions, with mantras, affirmations and prayers all repeated. Along with hindsight bias, judging a past event as predictable, these effects can greatly influence what we believe to be true or false. We must stay alert. We must continue to control the virus and save lives. We must stay alert, control the virus, and save lives. In their paper, The Reiteration Effect in Hindsight Bias, Hertwig et al. cite the historical figures of Cato, a Roman statesman, and Napoleon as using the illusory truth effect to increase the believability of their claims. Thus, when repeatedly told a battle was, or would be easily won, that became the truth of the matter, even if the facts were against it. We've so far succeeded in the first and most important task we set ourselves as a nation to avoid the tragedy that engulfed other parts of the world. From a more modern perspective, the five experiments conducted by Unkelbach and Ron 2017 suggests that judge truth is influenced not only by reputation but also by familiarity, backing up Hertwig's earlier work, as the more links a statement has to a previous statement increases the judge truth. Furthermore, the fifth experiment demonstrated that these judgments were also influenced by environmental conditions, going on to assert that truth is based on constantly related references in memories, thus reputation causes familiarity, and familiarity suggests truth. We've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. Must stay at home. To stay at home, protect our NHS, and save lives. Thank you. Explicit memory is the ability to form new memories and the conscious recollection of those memories. In 1972, Tilving identified two types of explicit memory, episodic and semantic, with their combination leading to long-term memories. Episodic memory is a contextual memory, the type we think of as memory. Past experiences episodes are remembered as facts or truths of an autobiographical event combined with the emotions involved. And of course I understand how difficult this is, but the problem is that when you go out, it's not only that you might directly interact with somebody closer than two metres, it's also that whenever you, uh, that you can spread the virus uh, through touching something which somebody else then touches, or you could pick it up that way. So. Semantic memory is a sum of an individual's views and experiences, working like a personal zeitgeist or filter that we want run our episodic memory through to fill in the gaps. Thus, semantic memory is used to recall what a car is, but episodic memory is used to recall if you drove that car and any major differences than past experiences you've had with a car. You kids can't keep your heads to yourself. I'm going to turn this car around and there'll be no Cape Canaveral for anybody! That's it! Back to Winnipeg! By saying our success suggests that the measures taken have been effective. Unless directly affected by COVID-19 or its response, this could become an episodic keystone memory combined with a new strategy and stay alert message suggests that flattening the curve was a success and any new spikes are caused by not staying alert. 
On the surface, this would appear to be a sensible approach, but as the virus is too small to see, what are we staying alert for? If the answer is ourselves and each other, by staying alert, we can place ourselves under the illusory truth that we can go about our day and by being vigilant, be safe. However, our alertness from our perspective will expose us to people not being alert. And as there seems to be little clear guidance, it has the potential to cause confusion and doubt filling our semantic memory and directing any anger towards each other, potentially absolving the actions taken by the government. The consequences of this pandemic and each country's response will not be fully realised for some time, with the total number of deaths above average and the long-term effects on the economy the only fair indicators. But as now, more than ever, it's up to us to stay safe, stay alert and where possible, stay at home. And dependent, as always, on the common sense and observance of the British people and on continual reassessment of the data.